we're gonna get started with the fun part of this class, which is demo day. So welcome all. Where traditionally we would have a robot working in some, some kind of um, uh, storage facility, more and more we're seeing robots that need to be used not in a previously mapped space. We're talking about something that doesn't quite exist yet, but it is very much within the horizon of what we expect robotic systems to be able to do within the next decade. In our class, uh, Swift Us basically designed every single module from scratch by ourselves. We have five labs in, uh, in this class. Uh, at the beginning of semester, we want students to get familiar with the chart and also write some simple uh, script to work with a robotic operating system or ROS. And that's basically the start of semester. And based on top of that, we want students to read about how those charts are able to avoid both static and dynamic obstacles. How did it go? It has not been going so well. Um, what seems to be the consensus between us and the TAs is that it doesn't seem to be a problem on the software side, especially because when we were doing the simulation, um, it like worked really well and like we get a nice visualization whenever we run the simulation. When we ran on here, it seems to be having like some like discrepancy between what it should be doing and what it's actually doing. We expect students will have a lot of issues, especially dealing with the hardware system. Many things are uncertain, unknowns, and uh, not uh, very optimized. Uh, so they can try it around to run their algorithm and try to have a feeling like if you deploy those theoretically really good algorithm onto a real hardware system, what kind of issue you expect. So we have this core idea of planning to replan accounting for your ability to make new decisions, more informed decisions in the future. We look at the ways in which robots can generalize from the demonstrations that have been given to them by experts on how to accomplish a certain task, in addition to how they can just go on their own and learn from their own experience, which is what we call reinforcement learning. So in these scenarios, we want to let students to learn how to write down a high-level uh, decision-making algorithm to make sure their vehicle can successfully enter the roundabout and proceed to the next goal, and also avoid the vehicle that already entered the roundabout uh, safely without causing any collisions. What I love about the course so much is that you're taking these very high-level, kind of complex theoretical concepts and doing something that you don't do as much in your low-level courses, you directly apply it in labs. It really helps you build camaraderie with like your lab mates, like your group mates, and kind of just like, some people might be kind of scared, but I think it's part of what makes the course fun. I'm sure you've been working tirelessly for the last few days, and so hopefully this will be somewhat uh, cathartic and you'll get to show off the cool results of your work. Things that uh, has been a problem all semester has been whether or not the slam is going to function accurately. So if our car is not able to localize, it's not going to be able to make good decisions. Um, and so we're just keeping our fingers crossed that that's going to go. No, but can you stick to that half of the room? If your localization is good there, just go into the roundabout. This is absolutely what happens with live demos, right? And it's something that, uh, honestly, you might as well get used to as a student when you've been working for days getting together a system that is working just fine the night before, and then you get to demo day and system starts going down. Okay, very good. You can get 99% of the way there and still have a system that is absolutely not viable for deployment. How can robots guarantee safety, meaning avoiding unacceptable outcomes like collisions or accidentally hurting a person that's nearby? Okay, ready? <laughs> Right now we're trying to get the cars to localize. We're driving around and hopefully the cameras are going to pick up on the QR codes around the room and then once it starts tracking its location, it'll have a better idea of where it is.
Yeah. You just got overtook. How'd it go? That one went well. Basically, uh, we did two runs. In one of the runs, the first car had a probability of uh, 0.6, so that's like 60% of turning into the other lane as the other car is trying to overtake. So that's when it has a higher probability of crashing because we were able to uh, overtake the, the leading car with our vehicle using an MTT. I think it's very important, especially when you like when our students go to industry and try to build a real Waymo car or Zooks car or Tesla. They need to uh, have the same issues to try to balance off different algorithms or to try to think out of the box how to deal with those things. Our hope here is that this won't be something that you think about for the first time when you are starting your PhD or you know in the middle of your PhD or five years into your job in the industry, but rather something that will be part of your core education as an engineer who's going to be working in robotics and autonomous systems.